This is Dinkum, a game where you leave the big city behind to start a new life on a beautiful island. But secretly, you're working for a mob boss called Fletch. She, she's horrible. She, she made me do stuff I didn't want to do, like chop down trees and farm and stuff. And I had to speak to someone called John, and he, he ripped me off. But it's okay. I'm the Great Dane. I survived 100 days in Dinkum, and this is how it went. If you do enjoy, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Day Zero started with me finding a random letter posted through my door about a way to leave the city behind and go to an amazing place called Ligmatopia. So I decided to go for it. I met this old woman called Fletch and we left for Ligmatopia. Day one started out and we were flying over the island and she told me, this is it. We're in Ligmatopia. You're in the big times now. You're out of South City. I'm the boss, you'll do everything for me, I'm going to rip you off and there's nothing you can do because guess what, I didn't bring along anyone that's going to stop me. But now you've got to find somewhere for us to live. So I'm like, okay, I can do that. So she gave me a base tent, a map, sent me on my way to find somewhere nice. But I thought, we'll go somewhere nice, you know, get a few nice plants, a bit of wildlife. We set up the base tent, a shock, she's done nothing. So she gave me a tent for myself, told me to go set myself up, so I thought I'm moving away from her, making sure there's a bit of distance, I don't know if she's a sleepwalker, she might come and, you know, start punching me in my sleep, I don't want that. The rest of day one was just her telling me about how John's an absolute legend and just a few odd jobs that she needed doing. We set up the visiting sites, we got people visit the island, she gave me an adventure journal from her dad. Told me how to make a campfire, gave me a bug net, and it was pretty much quite simple for the rest of the day before we slept and called it. Day two started out with Connie joining the island. I was buzzing. We weren't going to have to survive these 100 days with Fletch alone. We had someone else to feel the pain. So this is where Fletch started to reveal the true self. She started to tell us that we needed license to be able to use any sort of tools and there's only one person that could give us these licenses and it was Fletch. A bit funny that since we're on Fletch's island and we're doing jobs for Fletch and she wants us to then get licenses from her. Either way, I ain't daft. We finally spoke to John and he wanted us to catch him a fly so we could start that beautiful friendship between us blossoming. Little did I know, it would never happen. He gave us some business pants. I don't know why. But, yeah, it's just what happens. We got ourselves a login license from Fletch before we went to John's shop, bought ourselves an axe and we could start chopping down trees. We then sold John what we had on us so we could get a bit of money so we can get the table saw, which is what Fletch wanted. For some reason, it ain't like she's going to do the work. It is all on me. So we finally chopped down our first tree and then Fletch started talking about how it'd be great for John to stay here permanently. Well, we'll see what happens. We've got to get that relationship up first. Then got the mining license, bought the pick off John and started mining, hoping to find some juicy ores. We got pretty knackered from this, so it wasn't long before we had to call it a day, get back to bed and get our heads down. Day 3 started by me waking Connie up, telling her today's going to be a great day. We started out by doing a bit of mining, just to get these ores in, we wanted to make sure we had everything we need for any possible future crafting. We then accompanied Connie by the fire pit where we made some food, ate away, and we got our first furnace. We could actually melt down these ores so we can make the bars and make nails, wooden crates and start crafting good stuff. John then told us he wants to stay. We've done it. We got our first resident on the island. So we applied for the deed for his shop. We set the shop up in a nice little area just near the town hall. Or soon to be town hall. Crafted everything we needed and got it all put in so that the shop can get built over the next couple of days. And then moved mine and Connie's beds next to each other. Hoping we can have a cheeky cuddle. And then called it a day. Day four was spent gathering the rest of the resources we needed for John's shop. So we chopped down some trees and lucky enough, 
I found a beehive. And I'm pretty sure these sell for a tasty bit. So we got a fishing license, got a hunting license, and a building license from Fletch before Connie gave us the rest of the resources we needed to finish off John's shop. And after that was done, we called it a day and moved straight into day five. But we start out by mining some ores. As usual, we've got to make sure we've got a good supply. Because you need the ores for a lot of stuff. For making tools, for a lot of the time when you're building the shops. And for a lot of stuff you have to end up making. So we smelt down the ores, make some good nails. Make a wooden crate so we've got some good storage before we make a bridge. We decided, you know what, we don't need to be swimming all the time. It's knackering. So we build a bridge from one side to the other over this little river, clear out the mangroves, and that is us done for day five. So day six started with us finding out that John's shop was finally open. Well, not open yet, but it was going to be in like an hour or so. So we, we sort of just chilled, waited about, looked at our new area before going in to see what John has built for himself. So we bought ourselves a new axe from his new shop and decided it would be a good time to pay off a little bit of town debt, you know, so when we come to building something new, we don't have to pay him much off. Do a bit of mining, but this is where I kind of, I kind of monged it. I was low on energy, but I didn't realise if I caught this butterfly here, I was going to pass out. <laughs> Once we had awoken, we cooked a bit of food, ate it, and then went back to John, sold us from the stuff that we'd mined, and then finally sold that beehive we found the day before. We actually got quite a bit of money for it. I was thinking 9k, not bad for a beehive that literally was just in the trees. Rest of the day, we didn't do too much. Started out with a bit of fishing, got ourselves some fish, nothing crazy before we ended up calling it a day and getting ready for day seven. So day seven started out with someone new visiting the island that happened to be Theodore who runs a museum. You know, he's alright. So we speak to Fletch, try and get the deed done but she says that we need to pay off the town debt before we can. So we go sell everything we've got to John and we make about 8k but isn't enough. He also gives us a bunch of prize tokens which we go and spend on a cool statue. And I don't even know what the statue is supposed to be of but I'm going to say it's me because I'm cool. I spend the rest of the day fishing, hoping to get a bit more money, hoping to maybe catch some rare fish. John wants to actually buy one of the specific fish offers for 3k, which is quite good. Sell the rest for 10k, gets us up to a decent amount, so we can nearly pay off the town debt. With our prize tickets, we buy something cool, but you're going to see a cape. How cool is that? I'm loving it. I'm thinking it's great. So I go to, go to Connie and I say, what do you think of my cape? She's like, nah, ain't feeling it. So I put 20k into the thing, move me bed to the other side, because she's in the bad box, and that's the end of day seven. So day eight starts with John asking us to go catch a cart for him. And we say, yeah, we're doing a lot of jobs for the people that end up living here. We want to build the relationships as high up as we can, so we can sort of not really get like a 100% completion, but we want everyone to like us. We want to have a good relationship. So in the future, if we need something, you know, we've got an easier way of the, you know, the people living to help us out. So we do a job for John and then Fletch is asking us to go get a spider. So we'll go get that, give her the spider. She's like, you know what? You're always helping me out. Take this. Uh, a blueprint. Yeah. So I decide to use some of our stones that I've gathered to make some nice brick paths so we can make the place look a bit better. Because at the minute it's looking very, very empty. It's just a bunch of random buildings in a random place. So we decide to make a nice little path to show sort of where we want to expand in the future and to sort of set the layout of our town before we call it day for day nine. Day nine starts and Franklin's visiting. He needs to visit more. These whole hundred days he visits three times and he's one of the best people you can get because he can make you so much good stuff. Anyway, day nine, we finish off putting more paths down, we decide to path off a little area for our crafting and then I decide to make a path leading towards the brig but we don't finish it today. So I sell everything I've got to John, 34k, we're laughing, 
So we go, pay off the rest of the town debt, and that is us debt free. So first thing we decide to do is a bulletin board, because it's only 10k, we can pay that straight off. Bulletin board goes down, and it means we can now get jobs from other people on that board so we can see what we need to do. The rest of the day is spent, bit of hunting, bit of mining, looking for some good stuff. We go and fight this crocodile, almost die. I, I was pretty lucky to stay alive, I think, because at this point I had not fully understood how the fighting worked. As you can see, Connie did not make it. She actually died. Or passed out, you know, as we call it in this game. Day 10, we apply for the museum deed. So we think, right, where can we put this? We want to put it somewhere good. So I decided to put it up on the hill, just behind the town hall near the house. So we check what we need. We're thinking, great, we're going to need different types of board. We're going to need concrete. I didn't even know how to make concrete at this point. So I had to Google that. We figured out it was quite simple. You just needed a stone grinder. Chuck your stones in there. Concrete. Nice and simple. So me and Connie cracked on with that. Decided it would be a good time to do a bit of landscaping, get some stairs on the go, and make it accessible and nice and easy. So now we had stairs leading up to our house, and we had stairs to the museum, as well as this nice light wall. I then decided to get some more paths, make the paths that lead up to the house, up to the museum, just so, again, we had a nice little area, and it looked a bit more better. We got a fishing license level 2 and we got our first metal detector so we could use some metal detecting to hopefully find some good stuff. What we're looking for is amber chunks and we're looking for shiny discs because Franklin buys them for just under 9k each. So we pick one up there, they are good money. We pretty much spent the majority of the day doing that before we called it a day and we was on to day 11. Pretty much 11 and 12 we spent the same doing the exact same thing. So Rain visited on these days and we decided to speak to her. And then we thought, you know what, we'll accept this request to get a photo of an amber chunk. So we spent all day looking for this amber chunk. And then we started fighting different animals. I mean, we were exploring everywhere. We were, we were set on this. We had looked around the museum because we kept catching random stuff. A bit of money I had, I thought I'd pay off a bit of town debt. Still going even into day 12 now still looking for this amber chunk we spent all day two full days looking for this amber chunk thinking we're gonna do this we finally get one connie finds one and i'm thinking perfect we haven't even got the camera we don't even know how to take a picture turns out you need a camera for it what a waste of two days it was the most pointless time ever but Connie managed to get quite a lot for that amber chunk and she paid a lot off towards the town. So we were pretty much now fully paid off for the museum. And then Fletch wanted us to build a bandstand. So we put the deed down in the centre of the town, put everything we needed in, and we had it ready on to day 13. So day 13 started out with Irwin visiting. He was pretty much, he's Steve Irwin, isn't he? RIP the legend. So he started out with pretty much telling us we can get chooks from him which are like chickens i believe like baby chickens so i buy a little house for them make a few fences and sort of make a nice little area so we can get our first chook but little did i know the shop was going to be closed and all that was for nothing I spent all day doing that for nothing so day 14 started out did a spot of fishing, just like we do, catching some good fish. I actually enjoy the fishing in this game. I think it's quite good. It's not something terrible, but we had a lot to donate to Theodore. So we wanted to make sure we got a lot of these fish into the museum so he's happy. Sold the rest, got a decent bit of money off John. Finished off by putting the rest of the stuff into the bandstand so we could have that finished for day 16, I believe it was done. Anyway, quick job for Fletch, wanted to catch a fish. Lucky enough, we already had it on us. What are the chances of that? Then we see John wanted to buy what we got off Fletch. So that works out. So that's two easy jobs done. And then we carried on with the paths, making a nice little square area round, around our town centre, should we call it? Day 15, it was more paths. 
I wanted to make sure the place looked nice. So I decided to make a nice little cooking area just next to the visitor tent so that we could always have somewhere to make food and prep it. Also then carried on making the path towards the bridge. So again, we didn't have loads of like bushes growing and it looking overgrown. And again, it looking nice. We wanted to make sure the place looked nice and sort of civilised. I then cleared the area so we could have the pass leading up to the museum and to the house. Day 16 started out with me and Connie having a nice little dance in the bandstand in the rain. And having a cheeky little kiss. Oh yeah. Don't watch this kids, this is for adults. <laughs> so John asked us to do two copper bars. We think we can do that nice and easily. We set out, go mine some copper. Give him the top copper bars. That's another job done. We then went and spoke to Fletch who wanted the exact same fish he wanted catching yesterday, catching again. So we went and caught that for her, gave her the fish, and that is another job done. Nice and simple day, and then we move on to day 17. Day 17, Erwin was visiting again, so this was the perfect day for us to go get our chook. We decided to name it Bella after the dog that recently passed away. So um, we're gonna bought, make sure we bought some food, bought a feeder, and got the chook in there. If you are someone that plays this game and you have a bit of knowledge, yes, we understand that we pretty much abused all animals until later on in the game when we realised that each animal needed its own house and each animal needed petting every day and all that. We didn't know. We are abusers. I am very sorry. <laughs> this is not our fault. We went into this game blind. We just looked look like the look of it and thought we'll go for it. But as you can see, we've just done a lot of jobs throughout the day. We did Owen another job, getting him some clothing. John wanted some food, so we got him some nice cooked meat. Marble bench, not too bad. And then we spoke to Theodore, who just wanted two mangrove sticks, which is easy enough. So we gave him his sticks. The, another job done. Got some pink sneakers, and then we called it a day on to day 18. So we started this day by going to go get our metal detecting license level 2 and a vehicle, vehicle license level 1 so we could make a boat. Again, Flex wanted the exact same fish. We thought, oh, alright, we'll go get you this same fish again. And then we went and spoke to Theodore. I didn't realise it was his birthday and I wished him happy birthday and he was expecting a present and I didn't have a vote for him. So I just took my shoes off and went, there you go mate. There's my shoes I've been wearing for the last 18 days. You can have them. He was actually quite happy with it. So then we spoke to John and he wanted a fish catching as well. So we set out to go catch everything we needed for John and for Fletch. Day 19 arrived and we had Rain visiting the island again. She wanted a fly, so we thought, yeah, no problem, we'll get you a fly. And then Fletch offered us a white dress for just over 2,000 dinks, and we thought, yeah, let's go for it. So then me and Connie put our money together so we could upgrade our house from a tent to an actual home. As I don't know why, she just wasn't happy in a tent. Apparently, it's just not a bit of her. So then, gone to Fletch, apparently this was going to happen overnight whilst we were asleep. And that's worrying how they were going to move us from our tent asleep into a house. Anyway, so uh, John wanted a fish and chips. So I told him, no, I ain't making you a fish and chips, mate. It ain't happening. But lucky enough, I managed to find a fly that we needed to catch for rain just on our path outside of a tent. Gave her a fly and she was happy. So we put in the materials we needed for the house. Easy enough, wasn't too bad. I decided to craft a rowboat. I thought, you know what, I want to see how these boats work and how the vehicles work in the game. So I hop in the rowboat. We'll go on a nice little, uh, nice little adventure. We do a bit of deep sea fishing. Day 
day 20 we wake up on the floor out of our beds because the house is now built and they've moved everything but looking up i had a bed from yesterday from rain so i place it down and then theodore wanted us to buy his rainbow pants for another two and a half thousand things fletch had a job for us to get 27 cooked meat for just shy of 50,000 dink, so I, I decided to spend the day cooking the food and Connie decided to go and gather it. As you can see, I set myself on fire and yeah, Connie was no help. Then we spoke to John and John wanted something to eat, so we also gave him a bit of cooked meat and told him, here you go mate, don't you worry. And lucky enough, he actually gave us the blueprint for the animal feeder, which helps out. So we decided to go speak to Fletch and go put another uh, deed down for a spare house, thinking this could be something useful, will it attract more people, and it turns out it actually is a bit pointless, it's for people visiting your island. So Connie technically could use that house for herself, but we decided no, we're going to live in the same house. So we dropped off the 27 cup meat to Fletch and she gave us the big 47,000 dinks, which is going to help out pay off the debt that we've already got because of this spare house we just built, and we called it a day. Day 21, we decided to pick up our first egg from Bella, give her a nice little pet, and also speak to Erwin and see if he wanted the job doing. So he said he wanted a bit of food, so I, uh, <laughs> I decided to bring him some cooked meat thinking he's going to love it. Turns out, no, he hates that and he didn't want to eat any more food after that. So uh, I think he's a vegan, I didn't know. But lucky enough, John was like, I could do with some food and he, he's happy with my meat. John loves my meat. So anyway, we speak to Fletch, see if she's got a job for us, and she wants us to catch a grass yellow butterfly, and we think, mm, yeah, no problem, we can do that for you. So we go get her a grass yellow butterfly, give her it, and she's quite happy with that. So then what we do is, because we've got nearly 3,000 license points, we decide to increase our hunting license level two, and then we call it a day. Day 22, we've got our first alpha animal to get. So we've got the alpha croco, and this actually turned out to be more difficult than we thought. Not because the boss was difficult, the boss was well, once you got in there, you know, you played a bit of Elden Ring, it was quite easy to understand. It was pretty much, you know, a few hits, jump out the way. Connie died, but that's okay. You know, she she's never played Elden Ring. She just hasn't got it in her. But uh, what the hardest part was, was the crocodile decided to run into the water and not come out. And I couldn't hit him where he was. So I had to, like, build out and sort of create an area where I could go out further and hopefully get a hit on him. So we can see he's absolutely one hit. I had to build out even more before I could jump and finally kill him. So we go back to town and Flex gives us the money for completing that request and that's also even closer to getting five hearts with her. We're now on two hearts. Day 23, Rain is visiting again. And we uh, have a look how much debt we've got left in the town. So we decide, you know what, we'll put 30k into there and Connie can cover the rest. So then Rain says to us, I've got three tin bars I don't want. Do you want to buy them? We're like, yeah, that's kind of helpful. And then Fletch, selling us green shoes. No drama. We decide to spend the rest of the day doing a bit of mining, hoping to find something useful. But we never actually end up doing that. Just mining a bit of stone before we go to bed and call it a day. So the plan for day 24 was quite simple, we were going to mine a lot until we could get the mining license level 2, so we could make the copper pickaxes, and then hopefully at some point unlock the deep mine where is all the good treasure is, all the good ores, and that's where we can make the most money. So we finally got uh, enough that we could get our mining license level 2, and then we called it a day, went straight on to day 25 where there was someone new visiting the island. Day 25 pretty much was spent doing random stuff so we could get our license points up so we could eventually afford the deep mine. So we pretty much had to catch some fish, eat some food and chop some planks. Now we ended up fighting a shark which was quite simple. I thought the sharks were going to be a lot more difficult but they actually weren't. But yeah we did a lot of fishing this day. 
so we could sell them all to John, get some good money, get some tokens, and get our license points up. Day 26, we went and petted the chooks before realising that Connie had actually gone and bought one herself. So we now had two chooks, which was quite good. So we fed them, and then we spoke to Fletch, who saw that we had two giant raw drumsticks on us and wanted to buy them for 3k. We were closing up on getting closer and closer to having enough license points to get this deep mine and we were only 15 away. John then asked us if we could go catch him a fly and we checked if we had one on us and lucky enough we did. We didn't even have to go catch one. Smart. So to make sure we had enough license points, what we had to do was get some seeds so we could get the next level. So we just spent sort of maybe about an hour hitting random plants, hoping to pick up seeds before we finally unlocked the human mower. Bought ourselves a barbecue to spend a bit of money. And we were only 1k away from getting that finished. So we then went and bought a pickaxe and that was us done. So we got rid of, tried to get rid of the campfires before I set myself on fire, as we can see. <laughs> so I had to run around trying to get myself out and not set the whole place alight before we placed down our brand new barbecue, which was going to make cooking food 10 times easier. So then for the rest of day 26, we pretty much caught a few butterflies, mined a few ores before we called it a day and went to bed. Day 27, Erwin was back visiting, so we jumped out of bed and ran straight to him to see if we could do a job for him and hopefully get him to stay. All he wanted was three palm wood planks, and that was quite easy because we had palm wood all around us. So I, uh, I got them planks made and got them straight to him. So when I actually spoke to him again, he decided that he was going to stay and he told me that now we could get the new deed from Fletch. So anyway, we got another chook. We thought, you know what, we can't just have two, we need three and we called it Ariel. So I took this new chook over to the pen and put him down with her sisters. And again, yes, I understand that each chook needs its own bed and really needs its own food bowl, but I didn't know. Anyway, we got the deep mining license. We could actually now build the animal shop and the mine. So we didn't know what to go for first, but we thought, you know what? What might be best is to just go for the animal shop and get Erwin down before we go for the deep mine. <laughs> So I decided the best place for the animal shop would be right next to the chooks. So then we could make that our little animal area and it was all near each other. And it wasn't going to be too much of a hassle if we needed to get something quick for the animals if we'd like run out of food. So we got that done really quick on today 28. As you can see the shop was being built. We went round, made sure we petted all the animals. We're going to build a good relationship with them. And then we did a job for Fletch. We wanted some furniture. So we thought right let's see what we've got. Lucky enough, we were quite smart and uh, used our tokens to buy a bunch of furniture from John from just getting the fish, and I gave some of that to, uh, to Fletch. So I thought with the random stuff I bought, I'd decorate the, the house a little bit. Make it look a bit nice for me and Connie, you know? Make it a bit loving. She wasn't that bothered. She went straight to bed and ignored the fact that I made it look amazing. Day 29 came and Rain was visiting again. So we uh, we set off to go make sure we could do a job for her, spend a bit of money and keep her happy so she would hopefully come and stay at some point. She actually wanted to buy a grass seed for two dinks, so it was a very easy job, but it was very pointless. So we got a few more rock paths and a few more brick paths together, so we could finish off pathing around and made sure that the place looked nice, because 
Connie went about that. She was happy sorting the animals, she was happy mining, but when it came to making the place look nice, beautification we'll call it, she just was not bothered. She was happy with me doing it. So I made sure I took the lead on this to make the place look nice because you can't just have a standard looking town where it looks a bit, ugh, a bit meh. We wanted the place to look welcoming for anyone that came to visit. So if you're still watching at this point, thank you. I just want to let you know that this is over 30 hours of gameplay, all squeezed down to about an hour and 40, which it took a long time. I'm talking this is nearly a month's worth of work just into this one video here. So thank you so much. Day 30, you know what? Fletchy's like, I need some new clothes. So we're like, no problem, we can sort you out here. Take me trousers. I'll take them off for you. And for some reason, no one really cares about what clothes you give them. I mean, you can literally give them what you're wearing and they're like, thanks. So the next part was a bit strange. I, uh, I come outside with no trousers on and Erwin ran away shouting Predator. So uh, I don't know if he was on about me. But then John was asking for a meat pie. Told him, get stuffed, you ain't getting one. Day 31, we're the new visitor on the island, Melvin. He made furniture and sold them for ridiculous prices but you know what we want to do a job for him he's asking if he had any old furniture that's a bit dodgy that isn't it because you know what he's going to do we're going to be like yeah you go mate got an old table for you have that i thought no i ain't going to mess about and give him something to sell me back i bought it off him then gave him his own furniture mug this is where the 100 iq plays come in So we decided to plant a few apple trees about so we could have, you know, apples on demand. And also we thought, you know, it might look a bit nicer than just having, you know, the same palm wood, like trees everywhere. And then we went round hoping to find some more amber chunks, get some big money or even some shiny dish so that we could make some good money off Franklin. So Fletch asked us to catch a Harley Quinn butterfly on day 32 and I thought, I can do that. I'm, I can't imagine it's gonna be too difficult. No, we traveled across the whole map trying to find one of these butterflies. It genuinely took all day and we could not find one. And I, I don't know how or why it took so long to even be able to find one of these butterflies but when we finally got one i was buzzing we went to fletch told her we found her a butterfly and she gave us obviously what we've always wanted another bed so we uh we went to theodore and gave him the other stuff that we caught that had not been yet put into the museum we decided to go visit john and see if he wanted something doing he wanted us to catch a scarlet jezebel butterfly but lucky enough we had already caught one while searching for the first butterfly for fletch so we gave him that sold him everything that we uh we had which brought us a decent bit of money <laughs> And then we decided to call it a day. Day 33, Rain was visiting again. Was hoping this time was going to be able to get her to stay. So we uh, we spoke to her. See if she needed anything doing for her or if she just wanted to chat about her. And she said that she wanted a stink bug. So then we set out looking for this stink bug to hopefully get her to come and stay on our island so that at some point we could start farming and that would eventually lead us to making some good money. So we found this stink bug after missing quite a few times. And then we asked if John wanted anything doing and he wanted a blue moon butterfly catching. But again, lucky enough, we already had that on us because we decided whilst going for the stink bud, we'd catch a few more just in case somebody else wanted anything else catching because it's usually what they all seem to do. And then Erwin asked for five gun logs and we thought, yeah, we'll help you out. You've always been sound to us. 
Then we carried on with petting the animals to make sure that they are happy and that they are being looked after because we've not done a very good job so far. And then Fletch wanted some furniture bring in. So lucky enough, we obviously received a lot of furniture as reward for doing jobs for people. So we had pretty much a bunch of furniture built up ready to give people for when they needed it. And then we brought the two new things we've caught to Theodore to hopefully get them put into the museum and keep him happy. So day 34 started with John asking us to go get a fish for him and then we went and spoke to Fletch who wanted a stink bug. Again, lucky enough, we caught multiple the day before, so we sold a full inventory and was able to give her that stink bug straight away. We then decided to take our rowboat to go catch the fish that John wanted into the sea. We caught a few new fish, some big ones, and what he needed. We then returned to John and gave him the blue flat spot head that he wanted, hoping that he was going to give us something good, which he didn't, and then we went to Theodore to give him the new fish that we had caught. And then Theodore wanted to get him two gum logs. I'm pretty sure he could get this himself. He do not do anything but stand there. But either way, we went and chopped down a few trees to get him these logs that he so desperately needed. And then thought it'd be a smart idea to plant a few gum logs around so that we wouldn't have to travel all the time to actually go chop them down. We then went and gave the logs to Theodore, who then thanked us by giving us something amazing. A plant pot. We then went to sleep and woke up on day 35 to see that Franklin was visiting, which we were happy about. We went straight away to go get our shiny discs and to sell them to Franklin, hoping for some good money. Yet you saw that 230k, just shy of a quarter of a million, so he was able to pay off the town debt straight away and then get the deep mine ready to go. So we placed the deep mine down just outside of town. We didn't want it too close to the houses and it to be a sort of distraction. We had a look what we needed and we just needed some concrete, some old gears, some stuff that we found just from digging around, which we lucky enough had a massive amount of and then we pretty much had everything else to get it built and get it ready so we, we could get into the deep mine as soon as possible. We was a few hours short so we decided to go out, mine the rest of the stuff we needed so we could finish it that day because we wanted to get to the deep mine as soon as possible because we knew that's where the good money was. We even went and bought a bigger and better furnace just so we can get these ores smelted into bars as quick as possible. That was the deep mine pretty much ready to go so we went to sleep hoping it was going to get built as soon as. Day 36 we got a new logging license. We then got a landscaping license because you know me I like to make things look nice and that was it for the day. Rain visit on day 37, so we straight away saw that the uh, deep mine was finished and we went to go re visit Rain to hopefully get her to stay. So when we asked her if she needed anything doing, she decided that she wanted to sell us one potato for 1800 I mean, I enjoy potato as, next, as, you know, as much as the next person, but that's a lot for a singular potato, but yeah. Maybe there's inflation on potatoes at the moment, I do not know. So anyway, we go and buy our first mine pass so we can actually access the deep mine. We then go and step foot in the lift, ready to go down for our first experience. I am just going to say we were both not prepared at all for this. We thought we was until we realised it was dark, we had bats constantly attacking us, 
as well as bush devils, weird crocodiles. It was a very difficult experience for us. We didn't know about the treasure rooms that were, you know, require the key so we could unlock some cool stuff. We didn't even think about bringing a light down, so you can see it's very dark right now. But lucky enough, we were able to get as much ore as we could, and we tried to fight as much as we could to see if these are actually going to be difficult. As you can see, we didn't make it very far before we passed out for the first time. So then we decided to go back up, both of us drained, not done that well, and yeah, we it was a bit of a failure of a day, but we were, were certain that we weren't gonna, you know, call it quits there. We went and bought a torch, and we were gonna go back for it the next day. Day 38 started with us going and melting down all the ores that we had received the previous day so we could make a better pickaxe for us both so we actually could mine quicker and we could get the new iron ore that we discovered. So we uh, bought a new mine pass and went straight down into the mine with our torches ready to go hoping today that we are actually going to be able to see and get some good stuff. We actually finally found a treasure room. At this point, again, we didn't realize we actually needed the keys to get in. So it was quite frustrating realizing we had them all sat upstairs in the chest and we were trying to break open the door and it wasn't working, but I actually went and found my first gem. So I made sure I ran straight back to the lift with that and threw it in to see that Connie had already found two. And what can you say? There's nothing more attractive than a miner. I, I, no, don't say that, that's bad. So when we returned back to level ground, we went straight to John's shop to sell our gems. The first one sold for just over 50k, and then the second one sold for 56, so we were doing quite good. Third one sold for 47,000, and we pretty much had enough money just from that run alone to pay off the deep mine. So I decided to make another chest so we could sort of organise our area a bit better, because as you can see, it's, it's getting very cluttered and we had stuff lying around all over and we just didn't really know what to do. So we paid off the town debt and we called it a day. Day 39, we had someone new visit in called Clover, which we were pretty happy about. She sold us some new clothes, some fresh garms. And we pretty much decided to buy everything off her, hoping that I was gonna try, you know, influence her. You know, maybe just a little bit to come and stay on our island. Again, at this point, I just want to clarify, I didn't realise that different people had different needs. I just spent money with them and spoke to them, hoping it was going to work out. So she wanted us to go out and catch her, her a grass yellow butterfly. So we were thinking, oh, is this going to take a while? Is it going to take all day like it has done in the past? It took a while. I mean, it took until nearly 8 o'clock at night to get this done. But... Connie, the absolute legend, actually went and finished uh, the teleportation tower so we could now travel from one tower to the other and then we called it a day. Day 40, we spoke to Theodore and we gave him everything we caught on the day before. And then we sold the rest to John, hoping to get some more good money so we can just keep paying off every, anything we buy. 
so we can crack on. So we got another mine pass of the day, and this time we remembered to bring the keys with us. So we got the food ready to make sure that we weren't going to die or pass out. And then we made our way into the deep mine looking for treasure rooms. But we had a plan this time to stay together and be each other's sort of light source. So we actually found a gem pretty early on that we were able to take back. And then we found our first treasure room. We were very excited for this, hoping to find something good. So we actually had to mine round this to get into it as there was no easy way in. So we finally opened up our first treasure room to find some amazing stuff, obviously. Miner's helmet, and the best thing about it, a dog collar. The miner's helmet, don't get me wrong, was actually pretty good, because it just lit up and we didn't have to hold anything, so we were able to mine and see. We also found this really cool bat statue that required like 25 bat wings, so you could get like a bat glider. So that's something where if we do a you know, a 200 days, that's something we want to do. We carry the rest of the day mining up some iron because it was a new resource we had not yet got and we wanted to, you know, make as much use of it as possible, hoping that we could, you know, make better weapons, better tools. And this is where we found our second treasure room. We had a bunch of bats in it, so managed to collect them. Mom, get the camera. And then this one was nowhere near as good as the first one, but we got a slingshot some seed and nothing crazy but pretty much towards the end we had no energy no help but we managed to find one more gem before having to take the longest trip back to the elevator so we could finally get it in and we could call it a day because of the time we couldn't actually go to john's shop to give him in so we had to leave him in the house whilst we go to sleep and start the new day so Franklin we visit on day 41, so we uh, we thought great, so we'll drop our gems off and see if Franklin wants a job doing, and he wanted just three gunwood planks, so we were like yeah we'll do that, no drama, nice and easy. We then went and got the shiny disc that we had built up, we only had three and we gave them to Franklin, and then we had a quick look at what he could actually make, and we saw the quarry and thought that, you know, that seems like something that could be quite useful. So we went and sold what rubies we had and made decent amount of money before finding our first dog and giving it his collar. We decided to call him Roger. We thought, perfect name for him. But the thing with Roger, I didn't know we had to feed him. And I also, he disappeared a lot. So we got Franklin to make the quarry for us. It cost us 70k and he said he was going to make it overnight and would have it by the next day. Day 42 came around to me being attacked by an emu and then he attacked Roger so I ended him and I was ready to kill him and his entire family for touching Roger. We got our first commerce license and a trapping license so we could trap animals and make more money and then we decided yeah let's get one shotted by an emu whilst trying to find somewhere for the quarry so we decided we'll keep it nice and close as I don't want to die anymore. We then also made a nice little path leading to the quarry and we called it a day as we had no energy and no food. We had someone new visit on day 43 so we were excited to see who it was. And it actually was Julia which is Theodore's sister and uh, she brings the bug catching competition. So we were very excited for this thinking well great you know we, we like catching bugs we might win something good so we bought the competition net and I went straight out, catching bugs, thinking I was doing such a great, great job, before realizing I had not actually signed up for the competition and all of them I just caught were pointless. But then, as you can see now, I'm getting points for everything I caught. I then pretty much piled up everything I'd caught to show it off, thinking I'll free a bit of room up. And then we sold everything to Julia afterwards and we made 70k off all the bugs we just caught in a competition but we were yet to see where we'd actually come i was thinking I'd, i've got a one that i did quite good and no second i come second connie come third apparently john is the best bug catcher in the whole land 
and somehow went about with his net. Bear in mind, he didn't leave his shop all day. I don't know. I think he cheated. But we uh, we decided to mine a few more stones, get our stones up so we can make more paths in the future. And we was also looking for fossils, because we had heard that you could get fossils from inside of stones, yet we had not seen one. Day 45 and Rain was visiting. And then, again, we were looking to hopefully see if Rain was willing to stay. So we spoke to her, see if she had a job for us, and she wanted another stink bug. We then went and bought a hoe off her. Yeah, a, a watering can and we bought some seeds. So then when I spoke to her the next time, she said, you know what, I'm happy, I'm going to come stay. So straight away we grabbed the deed for that shop and then found somewhere good to place it. I decided I'll place it just out the way. We'll make like sort of like a little shopping district. So when we get other shops come, that's where they can sort of be. So straight away, we was able to get everything we needed. We had it all ready. And then I needed to now make a nice little way to get to the shop. So I managed to clear it up a bit and put some nice paths leading to the actual shop. And we also made it so it seemed still a bit natural and that we'd built off the land and we'd not changed too much. So then we went and gave the stink bug that we found to Rain and now she was happy, she was staying and we'd finally got another person living on the island with us. Day 46 we'd upgraded our mining license to level 3 so we could actually now make iron pickaxes and this was sort of the top tier of picks we could make, there was not a better one we could do. So we went and bought another mine pass. And we got everything we needed to set out on another deep mine adventure. Again, we forgot the keys. We'd gone down there hoping it was going to go grey and we had forgot the keys. So we pretty much just spent the day mining iron thinking, you know what, what we'll try and do is stockpile a decent amount so that we don't really have to mine as much again. As you can see, we just kept getting attacked and attacked and they would not leave us alone. And at this point, we thought it's becoming a chore to try and even get down here. You can see I got set on fire and I... Sadly, I did not make it. I, I passed out. Again. And I thought, that's alright, we'll go again, I'll go find her. No. I, I, I'm passed out. Again. But it's all right. We were like, no, that's us done. We're off to bed. That's us done for the day. So day 47, Melvin visited. We went to go see if there was anything we could do for him. And he wanted to sell us free cabbages. And we thought, you know what? They might be useful at some point in the future. They might not. We then went and bought this register off him for just under 2,000 before seeing there was an alpha bush devil to go and kill. Now the fact that we had five residents living on the island, Fletch said we were able to upgrade the base tent into an actual town hall and she would cover the cost. And that all we have to do is just put the resources in. So I suppose that worked out okay on our half. So we went and tracked down this alpha bush devil and he wasn't too difficult. We sort of learned the best way to do it was a couple of hits, jump behind him and just repeat and lucky enough a couple of other bush devils decided to come and help us fighting this alpha so it was not too difficult it was pretty much 4v1 for the majority of the fight we then returned to Theodore to tell them we took care of that alpha bush devil for him and he gave us 33k and that sorted us out we still had a lot of money to pay off for the town for the new shops that we had built so then, anyway, we placed everything we needed in to get the town hall built, and we built a windmill to speed up the production of our like furnaces and anything we was going to have round there, because they took a long time. Day 49, we had someone new visit in the island. We had a hairdresser, and we're thinking, sweet, we're going to change up our looks. Sally is going to love it, and then she's going to come stay. Oh, she took forever to stay. I don't know. I don't know why. 
So anyway, she wanted us to catch a fly, and then we thought, you know what, I'm going to change my hair colour and my hairstyle a bit, and make us look pretty good. So we put the rest of the materials in inside of the town hall so we could have that done in the next coming days. We also then went and caught the fly for Sally. And then we spent the rest of the day chilling in bed. Day 50 come along and we wanted to see how much left we had to pay off for the town debt. We had 655 dinks, which obviously we had that, so that was easy enough. We paid that off. We then made an animal collection point and the animal trap so we could start trapping animals and making money that way. So we set out to go catch our first animal and we caught a turkey on the first try by just placing the trap down in front of them, the walk straight into it. So it was really nice and easy. And now we are halfway through. Day 51 started with Sheila visiting the island and oh my god, Sheila does my head in. She's always asking for the most randomest stuff and it's like, no, I can't get you this. How am I ever going to get you this? But So then for the rest of the day, I decided to clear out a nice area across the bridge so we could start a bit of farming. Little did I know this was going to take over for the next like 20 days where I just spent my days sorting out the farming area and looking back at this now I yeah I did a very bad job I made it terribly I also wish I took note of actually when each seed grew and that the fact that we were you know at the end of autumn and some seeds were going to die and not all of them were actually going to be able to grow fully but yeah I planted every seed that I had down and then we watered them and I realised this took a ridiculous amount of energy because my farming level was so low. So these first few days of just watering even a few plants, like, ruined me. As you can see, we've not got many. We've maybe got, like, 20 plants. And that was, like, nearly all my energy gone to the point where I was having to eat food continuously. But you see, I'm planting pumpkins. Yeah, they go to waste. Because I'm not smart enough to look at the date. So day 53 we've got Chloe visiting the island again. And still we're still hoping to get as many people to stay as possible. We want as many permanent residents as possible. So she just wants a blue moon butterfly. They're quite simple to get. They're all over. We catch one really quick and give her it. And then we carry on with the farming. As you can see, we've made the farming area a bit bigger now. And then we thought, you know what? We'll make a nice little path leading up to it. Because again, I'm all about that beautification. I want my place looking nice. I don't want it looking all just random. And, you know, we're not tramps. We look after our island. So then we had a few quite simple jobs we could do where they literally just wanted some fencing. Fedor gave us some money for fences that take next to nothing to make so really it's an easy way to build a relationship and get a few easy dinks we then decided to even expand the farm even further because i thought you know what if we're doing farming you know we've got to do this properly let's make a massive farm it's going to end up great and then we called it a day day 54 started out by just watering plants, as you can imagine. Like I said, this is going to be an everyday thing for a while. And I thought, you know what, let's put some coconut plants down. You know, coconuts could be useful in the future. So we threw a few coconut trees down. I did just call them coconut plants. I don't think you can plant coconuts. And then the rest of the day, well, even for the next two days, pretty much, was spent mining, looking for amber chunks, farming. And that was it for 54, 55 and 56. We were looking to make easy money and hoping to find some good stuff. You can see we did find one amber chunk and we got 44k for it. And we just were looking around for shiny discs and anything that could be useful. So we could build up the rest of the teleporters and say and make money. We also discovered these big rocks were the best ones to hit. Because you got multiple ores and you had a better chance of getting a fossil. So you can see we actually got another teleporter finished at the bottom of, I think this is the bottom of the map. And we just had one more to discover just near the docks. 
So day 57, again, we, we mine what we had at the quarry and we are back to watering our plants. Things are starting to grow, but this is actually the last day of autumn. So we'll move into a next season next and a lot of these plants are not going to survive the next season because they can't actually grow. We uh, we carried on looking after the chooks because we're, we're good like that. Making sure we feed them, even though we're, we're slightly abusing them by having one house for free. We didn't realise we're not meant to do that, but yeah. So then we went and dealt with an alpha bush devil. You can see these fights... The, to be fair, they're not really much of a hassle. They do go quite simple. It's just it's the mess about of getting there and dealing with a massive HP. Obviously, an occasional being set on fire. With that day fifty-eight, we had Sally visiting again. We had got to be close now. We've had the haircuts. We've spent the money. We've done it, but. And then, shock, we're back to watering plants. That's all we seem to be doing. It's just water plants, water plants, water plants. But we are now into winter. And that means one thing. Not all the plants are going to survive. But also, we're going to get different people uh, visiting. And it's also at first time we're in winter, which is exciting. So you can see, I'm looking about. At this point, we had not seen Roger for days. And I mean, we didn't know where he was, and I thought he was dead. But I finally saw him whilst waiting for Erwin. Oh, it was great. We finally found Roger. He, he was looking great. He'd just been out on an adventure with the boys, clearly. And, yeah, it, it might be sort of my fault. Because we've not fed him or found him anywhere to live. But I, as you can see, look, I'm trying. I'm throwing bones. He, he just wasn't having any of it. I'm petting him. And I'm thinking, you can come sleep in bed with us. He wasn't having it. So as you can see, our plants are dead. I watered them, hoping to bring them back to life. But some of the, the ground is, you know, has changed. And I thought, you know what, it's better to just... It's better to just get rid of them. And start fresh. And, you know, let's make this farm again. But make it smart. Let's try and not have it where all the plants are going to die so we place another bridge so we get over to this side easily just the same side as the other bridge but a bit further down and then we buy some actual plants that are in season so we can farm them so then we started planting our new crops onto the uh the field and you know expanding and getting knackered so we called it a day on to day 60. Day 60, Melvin is visiting. So we run straight to him, hoping to do a nice, easy job. Who wants a cooked banana? I mean, people have some weird stuff, don't get me wrong, like pineapple on pizza, but a cooked banana, I just, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. But we did that job and he gave us, he gave us a lamp. So at this stage, if you've played Dinkum, you know that you know what it's like when the crops are ready to harvest. I didn't. So I do spend quite a while with the crops, you know, ready to harvest without realising. And this is when I realised that we've not actually got shelter for all our animals and we've kind of been abusing them. So we realised we actually had to have individual housing for each chook and Roger needed his own house. So so we went and watered all the plants while we waited for Irwin's shop to open up. And as you can see, that's ready to be harvested. I just did not know. I really should have done a bit of research into this because I probably wasted so much time. But this was actually when I first discovered you could actually have a look at how your town was doing. We were at one and a half stars. And I was looking at it thinking, you know, we need to get the economy up. I was always trying to figure out what Roger ate. He didn't eat raw food, and then Connie figured it out. He'll eat cooked meat, but it's got to be the small bones that you get off, like, the turkeys. Went to Irwin's shop and finally bought him a house so he could be happy, and I threw some meat in there for him, thinking, yeah, he's going to love it. He didn't eat it. Day 62 starts with Sally visiting. Not too impressed with this. We want Franklin because he brings us the good money. But either way, 
she asked us if we could go capture a fly so we said yeah we'll do that and then we went and watered the rest of our crops just like we've been doing for the past couple of days but this time the corn was ready to harvest so luckily enough we've got corn we're good to go we're going to level our farming up quite a bit more we want to get to level 10 so we can get the better watering cans which actually do like a free wide area so then the rest of the day was spent looking for the fly but whilst i was doing that i thought a bit of concurrent activity and i pretty much went around digging and mining hoping to find something worth a bit of money or something useful We then saw that Theodore actually wanted to trade and that there was a higher reward for capturing a turkey. So we went to Theodore, gave him our red nose for some shutter shades because why not? And then we went out and caught a turkey that was just walking around our little city and we uh, traded that in to get some extra dinks. Day 63, we're back to watering crops. This is all we've done now is getting boring, but it's only going to get worse. So we... we we water everything and we still not realise that sugar cane and the wheat are all ready to be harvested. We then went and petted Roger because he's a good boy and he deserves the love because we've been abusing him. So then I decided to clear out the area to the left and behind of Irwin's shop so we could get a vombat. Which, I don't know what animal it's supposed to be in real life. But yeah, it, it's cool. And it was Pretty much Connie was enjoying the animal sort of aspect of this a lot. So we cleared out the area for her and then we let her sort the rest. One thing I can't wait to change are these fences because the gates, you can only have like the nice fences for it. And we use sort of the worst fences you could. So I want nicer ones. I want it to look nice. But we got a few stairs leading up, made a nice little pathway so it all links up and it all looks nice. We then caught another turkey just because it's just easy money. And then we went and met our new vombat called Georgia. So we put the feeder down, put some food in ready and I had to change the name because we realised it was a girl and we first had it as George. Day 64, Clover's visiting and we wanted to see what job she needed and she just wanted a tin bar, which is quite, you know, quite simple as we have a few of them lying about. So we gave her this tin bar and in return she gave us a wardrobe. Nice. Either way, we're back to harvesting, back to watering crops, back to doing what we've been doing every day for like the last 10 days. And then we went and checked on how the town was doing and saw that the economy was still quite low. So then we went and got a trapping le license level 2 so we can make better traps. And then this is the first time we had to craft it and go catch a different sort of animal. And we trapped a kidna, which I think is, is I don't know, it's like a porcupine. But I accidentally let it go instead of putting it just on there for it to go. So I had to chase it round, try and trap it again. And it must be smart or something because it discovered that if you don't walk into it you won't get trapped but i finally caught it and we finally sent it on its way for that extra cash money day 65 we wake up we're back to it harvesting our carrots watering our plants i still don't know how i didn't figure out that all these sparkle parts around them mean that they are ready to be harvested but either way we went around spent the rest of the day digging around trying to find something useful before calling it a day Day 66 arrived and Franklin was finally visiting, so I ran straight away and made sure that I got the shiny discs that I needed so we could make money. So that's, again, just shy of a quarter of a million dinks there. We're not doing too bad, and he just wanted a blue moon butterfly catching. I believe this is the last time he visited for like the whole hundred days he really just did not visit at all so this time we decided to get a compactor off him to make work moving dirt a lot easier because it was taking such a long time and he said that was going to take all night and that is him done for the day so we went and watered the rest of our crops 
and then I went and bought another stone grinder just to make it a bit easier and then we went and bought another barbecue a mine pass just so we could spend a bit of money and get the economy up I also went and spent a ridiculous amount of money on seeds before realizing I probably didn't need to decided to spend the rest of the day looking to find this final teleportation tower that was near the docks we made our way over there and we were looking about hoping to see it pop up in the distance somewhere and we pretty much found it as we were like swimming about but lucky enough connie had everything she needed so we could literally get it built straight away and teleport back to town lucky enough fletch was actually able to tell me we could now build the bank which meant that we were able to put our money into the bank and gain interest on this. And me and Connie thought, you know what, would we be able to get a million dinks by the end of this? You'll have to watch out and see. But then we decided to expand the Chuke area after realising we've sort of been abusing them for the past, you know, 60 odd days. And I kind of nearly let them all escape with the compactor. Uh, yeah, kind of my fault, but I didn't take the blame. Anyway, the bank deed went down, we got everything we needed and put it straight in there so that we didn't have to mess about and we could get it built straight away. We then went and got a level 2 vehicle license before getting a grain mill to see what it was about and to see what it was used for. Day 68 arrived with Sally visiting the island. Again, we don't, we're not that bothered about that, we wanted the good people. So we asked her if she needed anything and she just wanted a fly. So we went out, caught her a fly, took it back to her, and she was kind of happy with that. I kept making sure that I checked to see how our town was doing, because we were getting closer to that two-star overall score. And that was good, that's what we wanted. Either way, we pet a few of the animals and called it a day before we're on to day 69. We went to Millbourne and introduce ourselves before we watered our crops like we've been doing every single day we then returned back to see a few jobs on the bulletin board which is now for bush devil and it was given five copper ore to millborn the banker where he gave us three coppers bar in return which is a great trade because it's five ore just for one bar so me, me and connie took to the boat went and found this alpha bush devil and we made light work of it. It made more sense for us to actually just walk back and do a bit of, you know, bit of digging on the way back and actually found an amber chunk which was worth just shy of 60k and I was buzzing. I don't know why, but I just never found them, whereas Connie found like six of them. So I put that money into the bank to see how much interest we were going to get before calling it a day. And we were on to day 70 where we had Sheila visiting the island. So Sheila visited and we asked her what she wanted and she wanted some lamington. And it was a straight up, nah, not doing that. Anyway, we went and spoke to Fletch, told her that we killed the Alpha Bush Devil the day before, got our money, put it into the bank and decided to spend a day in the deep mine. Yeah, as you can see, it was it was not going well at the start. We we almost died there. Lucky enough, we were near some water, but it was just a day of fighting back against bats and looking for treasure rooms. Lucky enough, we found some cool stuff in this. We found a flaming bat and a guitar. You can see I'm strumming one out there. But again, it was just it was getting caught out. Again, I passed out, so I thought, look, my equipment's nearly broke. I'm not going to be able to do much. I'll walk out and find Connie. No, there was a crocodile waiting for me, and it just did whatever. So I had to jump out, run away from it, eat the few bananas I did, and that I was good. So we found another treasure room, and luckily this treasure room had another spear in it. So really, I'd not lost too much. I'd just lost a pick. But then we found another treasure room, and lucky enough, again, this one, boom pick has more durability than what we had when we came in so we've actually done all right do you know what's annoying i keep seeing stuff whilst i'm editing i've missed so many gems opals it, it's getting bad but either way we called it a day we had a full inventory 
I'd passed out a couple of times. It just wasn't worth wasting any more of our day. So I sold all the light bugs, whatever the call to John. Got a decent amount of money. And then there was another job to catch a kidna for extra money. We decided to water the rest of our crops. Again, like we've been doing. Before capturing a kidna. I kid you not. <laughs> that was a good one. We then decided we need to expand our little work area as it was getting a bit cramped. We, we had stuff on top of each other, we just didn't have enough room and we wanted to make a uh, crafting table for outside because we were just sick of running back into the, you know, the town centre, the town hall, whatever you call it, constantly. So we gave, you know, gave Roger a good old pet, gave him some food and he's finally eaten from me. I've been finally been able to feed him. For days he's just ignored me. But anyway, we spent the rest of the day doing a bit of fishing, catching some cool fish. And then we went to Theodore and gave him the fish that we caught so we could put them in the museum, as we wanted to get as much as that done as possible. We then called it a day on to day 72, where we had Sally visiting once again. She was like a rash, we could not get rid of her, and all she ever wanted was a fly. At this point, you feel like she would just go do it herself. But Connie, lucky enough, had a fly on her, so it wasn't a difficult job. She gave me a cool black coat that I, uh, yeah, I was so excited about. Anyway, I was able to actually figure out we can hit the wheat with a pickaxe, which you're not meant to. You're meant to use a scythe. So we, uh, we actually was able to harvest the majority of our stuff on the farm as it was just it stopped growing about five days ago so then we walked the rest of the crops that we've got on there and then planted a few more seeds as you can see th this took a while and it's going to take a while to water them but then my smart brain thought let's expand the farm even further so it takes me longer each day yeah this was one of the worst decisions I ever made. You can see we managed to catch a, a moo, I think they're called in this. So we went and uh, we went and caught a moo and got put Connie to work watering a few plants before on day 73 we started hitting a few things at the quarry and I wanted to expand the farm even further. But this time Yes, I admit this is the worst thing I've done in this game because it took so long. So even just watering one field, yeah, that's, you know, three trips filling up the watering cans and about four trips to get food. So the birds actually kept going in and ruining the plant. So I caught one, let one go, killed it, and then I caught the other and kept it in its cage so I actually could go and sell it and make a bit of money. So they say the rest of the day was spent watering the rest of the crops and then getting this field prepped. And I think it ended up taking me about 100 odd seeds to fill. So I think it was about 110 it took to fill. So yeah, we, we didn't just go little with this. We went quite big. So... Obviously, once we got to level 10, it made it a lot easier to water these. But at this moment, whether it was a singular thing, it just it destroyed your energy. Your energy was gone so quick. And the amount of trips I had to make back and forth just to finish this field every day, I regret it. I wish there was an easier way. And I believe there is with vehicles in the future, but we haven't had Franklin enough and i actually ended up passing out so we called it a day as i had no energy and clover was visiting once again so after speaking to clover we saw that she wanted furniture but again lucky enough we had a build up of furniture in the wardrobe so i was able to give her that and she was good for the day we didn't need anything else from her and we didn't need out to do for her so we pretty much spent the rest of the day watering crops as you can imagine. These days, I, I regret massively. I feel like they could have been filled doing so much more 
fun stuff. They was not. But as we can see, we finally actually got the uh, town to two stars, which is great. We put our money into the bank, and we were on to day 75, which again was watering crops. And this is all it's going to be for the next few days until they're ready to harvest. And then we never touch farming again. So we actually set out to get another kidna. We thought, you know what, bit of easy money. We chuck it on the thing before we call it a day and start on day 76. Day 76, Sally was visiting. Again, she uh, actually takes quite a lot to stay, so we were not too bothered. But we actually got our next farming license. And as you can see, we can make the copper watering can, the compost bin, and the copper scythe and hoe. We are buzzing with this because when you see, it's going to make life so much easier. Sally just wanted some furniture. We gave her a till that we bought from Melvin ages ago. She gave us some black ripped jeans. We made our new watering cans. Made a new scythe because then I realised you could actually harvest stuff with a scythe. And look how much easier this is. It is like 10 times easier. So then we got a thing from Millbourne. So anyone wanted to practice smelting. And he wanted five tin ores. Easy enough. Gave him then, and he gave us two tin bars, which is, you know, we're getting double there, so we've made good money. And then we saw that Connie was expanding the animal area a bit because she wanted to get a new animal. So we actually put our scythe to use for the first time, getting some seeds, and then we went to sleep. Day 77, again, we're watering crops. Like I said, th this takes a long time. We, we we didn't stop. <laughs> this is a very long process of just watering crops, capturing the odd turkey, and calling it a day. Day 78, and Melvin has visited, and he wanted some cooked prime meat. But lucky enough, we had a lot of prime meat lying around, so we cooked some up for him, gave him it, and he was happy. So then we saw that John wanted to practice some smelting, and lucky enough, we had what he needed on us, so we just gave it to him to help get that relationship up. And then you guessed it, we're back to water and crops. I told you, we're not slowing down with these crops. They are coming, it's, it's quick, it's happening. And then we call it a day because we've got no energy left, and we're knackered. Day 79, watering crops. What did you expect? This is all it's going to be until they're ready to harvest. Crops, crops, crops. We then decided to go out and get some more meat. We were running quite low on food. So we thought, you know what, it's not a bad time to just go around, you know, maybe try and extinct a few animals and uh, get our food up. Whilst we were out and about, we actually found another NPC called Ted Selly that sells quite good weapons, but nothing we could get there and then, because you needed a lot of different stuff for them. So they are quite cool, but just not what we could get. Day 80, Sheila's visiting the island, so we jump up, go speak to her, and see what she was demanding today. And she wanted a sausage roll, and again, I told her, no, I ain't getting you a sausage roll, you ain't getting out. But look enough, Theodore was cooking some fish and chips and he just wanted a bush lime and said, bring me a bush lime, I'll make you fish and chips. That sounds like a perfect deal to me. So we did that. And then you guessed it, we're back to watering crops. We're going strong. It, farming's in our blood. We love it. It's, it's the only thing I want to do for another 100 days. I also then thought it was a good idea to deliver another turkey just for that bit of extra money. Put a bit more money into the bank and we were just sat at shy of 200k. Day 81, the wheat was ready to harvest. Oh, this felt great. We had so much wheat and we'd actually just cut down our workload by 50%. So all we had left to do was water the sugar cane, make a few grain mills, because we wanted to actually see what we could make by putting, you know, our wheat into the grain. 
mill. So we expanded the path a lot, made a nice, you know, stoned off area, made a windmill to make the machines even quicker because they do take a while and place four grain mills down. We also saw how much debt the town had left and it had about 80k so I put 45 in and Connie put the rest in to pay off the town debt before we called it a day onto day 82. We then spoke to Melvin to see what he was up to and see if he had anything he needed doing. He just wanted some clothes. Also there was a few jobs on a bulletin board, nothing crazy so he gave some clothes to Melvin which was enough to get him to stay on the island permanently. So now we could get the deed for the furniture shop from Fletch. We then went to Milbourne at the bank and gave him five copper ore so he could get whatever he was doing, you know, whatever he's... I don't know what he does, he just does his own thing. We then went to Theodore and gave him one tin sheet. And he gave us two tin bite in return. So again, everything works out great. I then applied for the furniture shop deed and then we also then went and placed it down and got everything we needed so we could get it built nice and quick. We also then went and watered the rest of our sugarcane seed because we just wanted to make sure we could get it all done and I kept forgetting because I just did not want to do it. I was like oh for god's sake sugarcane here we go. So once everything was in place for the furniture shop, it was ready to go for the next day and we were able to then work on the animals a little bit more. Connie had built a silo that was going to automatically feed all the animals as long as they were in range. So that pretty much cut the jobs down quite a lot. We were now sort of getting into the automation side and to the points where it was getting quite easy to, the, to even just do normal farm stuff. So the sugar cane was ready to harvest, amazing. This is what I've wanted, no more farming, we are done. But we had half a bush devil to deal with. I tried out the slingshot that we got from the deep mine and uh, yeah, not feeling it, four damage, it, it, yeah, it's not very good. I'll stick to my spear for now. We took down this half a bush devil with ease, it did not take long, I don't think we even took any damage at all, so we've got nothing to worry about, we'll take down multiple. We then actually went and captured a bush devil because there was an increased amount of money you got for them. And again, I let it go. <laughs> but lucky enough, this was not as difficult as the kidna to capture. We then went and sold pretty much everything we had that we didn't need to John to get that bit of extra money before going to Millbourne and letting him know that we'd finished with his job of killing the alpha bush devil. So with all that money we had, we thought it would be a perfect time to put it into the bank, you know, to just build it up, get extra interest on this, we want to be rich. Day 84, Franklin's visiting, buzzing, this is what we've needed. So we spoke to Franklin, gave him all the discs we had, we only had 10, we didn't have many, but that's still a decent amount of money. And then we asked him if he needed anything and he just wanted some gum logs, so we chopped down a couple of gum trees before I had a beehive fall easy money that's just shy of 10k for a beehive and i thought this is great gave him his logs and then we wanted to get something built from him so we decided what would be great to do is the repair table but we didn't think about buying the repair kits so we can actually use it so it's a bit pointless so anyway we went and dealt with an alpha croco just for that extra money and i think this is the first time we've actually been able to fight one on land without it running away and i used the flaming bat to see if it was any better than the spear and it was good but i think i preferred the spear went back to the bank got the money off millbourne for dealing with the alpha croco and then we put the rest of the money back into the bank Day 85 we've got a repair table and then that's where we realised we needed a repair kit and it was useless without them. So then today was an Alpha Jackaroo. First time we've dealt with one of these but yeah, they're easy enough to learn. Jump over the shockwave, you know, Elden Ring player here, we can do this. Easy work. We actually then went to go speak to Flex to let her know that we dealt with the Alpha Jackaroo and only got 18k. I thought we was going to get a lot more for that but no. So at the end... Into bed, calling it a day. Day 86 started out with me getting jumped by this emu knobhead. 
I thought, no need. I'm just trying, you know, look around my town. Either way, went to Sally and she just wanted a bag of cement. Easy enough, it's just one stone. So we gave her a cement and she was happy. She gave us a chair. Lovely. Then we decided to pet some animals, you know, show them a bit of love, build a relationship and show them that, you know, we're not bad people, even though we abused them for half the life. Then on the bulletin board, Melvin put that he was cooking some lamb and turned and needed some flour. And lucky enough, we had some. So we gave the flour to Melvin and got our lamington. I looked at it and saw, this is actually great food. It's probably the best one you can get. So it was a win-win for me. I then found an opal, called it a day. And the next day, there was an investigation by rain because something had crash-landed and it was a satellite. So we were we were a bit confused, like... How was this satellite just crash landed? You know, aren't they supposed to be smart? But we broke it anyway and took what we could, and it was an easy job done. I then got irrigation license to make sprinklers because I thought I'll get back into farming. I don't have to water them. Oh, they are so expensive. They are not worth it. I'm I'm not doing it. It's like five copper just to do it. Like why? Why would you want to do that? So as you can see, we're into the deep mine. We're finding treasure rooms. And this time we were actually looking for these gems because we wanted these gems so we could break them up and get the shards because we figured out with the shards we could get to the undergrove which is a le level below the deep mine. Now looking back at it, I wish we didn't because that place was scary and it was not worth it. Everything was out to kill you. It was way worse than the deep mine. The deep mine looked easy compared to this. So we actually got quite lucky with the amount of treasure rooms we was able to find and we were able to find enough gems so we could access the undergrowth on day 90. So we used a mine pass and we ventured in. At first it looked quite safe and quite good and we was actually able to find some quite useful stuff with a candle hat. So it was like a miner's helmet but didn't use energy. So we was fighting these new creatures and then I was getting attacked by, I, I don't even know what they are, worms, snakes, caterpillars. But they were on me. I was able to find a cool green gem. And I thought, great, this emerald has got to be worth loads more money. No, I'm, I'm better off just sticking to the, you know, the deep mine. What a waste of time. So in the treasure room, we've got quite a few of these statues. So I decided to place them around town and put some of the lights down that we got from the undergrowth to make the place look a bit, a bit nicer and light the place up a bit for when it gets dark. And we called it a day and we're on to the final 10 days now. We had an alpha croco to deal with and an alpha jackaroo on the same day. And we thought, you know what, we can deal with them both. It's not too hard. So we went out and found the alpha jackaroo and I soloed this one. Lucky enough, Connie caught me up to be able to fight the Alpha Croco and we handled this one together whilst fighting a bunch of other creatures as well because they all love to attack each other and attack you whilst you're fighting. So we went to Theodore and told him that we took down the Alpha Croco. And then we spoke to Wurring to tell him about the Alpha Jackaroo. So altogether we got quite good money for that so we went straight to the bank to put it all in and we were just shine out of hitting 650k so sally visited on day 92 so we want to go see what she wanted today she wanted a grass yellow butterfly and i thought mm, i don't really want to but i will do because i can sort you out and lucky enough i found one quite early on but i decided to spend the rest of the day going around looking for some amber chunks or some fossils or something so we can make some easy money we then gave the grass yellow butterfly to Sally so she was happy. And then we got into bed to call it a day before day 93. Day 93 we started to put sugarcane and wheat into these grain mills a lot more and pump out multiple stuff because it was selling for good money. And this is what we're after. And at this point I'm pretty sure Roger broke. He, 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 I don't know what he was doing. I don't know if he was... If he was you know on something that he shouldn't have done like if he accidentally sniffed some catnip but yeah day 94 clover visits so we go to speak to clover to see if she's ready to stay yet 
She says she just wants a tin bar. So we say, you know what, we'll help you out. Here's your tin bar. And then she tells us she really likes it here and she wants to stay permanently. So we clear out a nice little area for her just behind uh, the seed shop and just to the left of Melvin. We decide to put the deed down and get everything ready so we can have the shop built and we make a nice little path leading up just so this can be a sort of shopping district. Day 95, we go around by checking on the animals, giving them a pet, checking if there's any eggs that need picking up, and then we decide to give Lilith a shear. With the milk, we're able to make cheese, and with the wool, we're able to make silk, so it all works out quite well. We then go to the bank and put in all the money we have, and Connie gave me some of her money so we could get it in to try and get close to this one million, and we call it a day before 96. Sheila's visiting again, not impressed, don't want Sheila. She just requires too much stuff. But today she asked for something we can do, meat on a stick. Doesn't take much, we make the meat on a stick for her and we finally actually finish a job for her over after like the sixth time of asking. But we get a commerce license level two, so we actually get more money when we sell stuff. So we went out and we found an opal and then just spent the rest of the day mining stuff up, hoping to find something useful and something worth money. And again, as you guessed it, I didn't. I actually found an, a weary moo egg, which are worth a decent amount, and I accidentally hit it with my pickaxe and broke it. That's an L. Melvin wanted some flour again, but this time it was so he could make some bread. So we gave him the flour and got our loaf of bread from him. We then sold everything we had to John, who offered a decent amount of money, and we were like, this is looking good. And we were so close to hitting the one million now. So we stole an egg, Ran back to John. As you can see, 25k. We were laughing. So we went and got all the animal stuff that we'd made and sold it to John. And now we had enough to hit the 1 million. 1 million dinks in 97 days. I'd say that is quite good going. Day 98, Sally is visiting. So we go out and see what Sally wants today. So lucky enough this time she just wanted a cook giant drumstick and that's something we can do. That is nice and simple and it ain't a mess about so we give her that. And then we started to spend the rest of the day doing a bit of fishing, hoping to find some good fish that we haven't caught yet for the museum. And for some reason Connie came and attacked me because I was catching better fish than her. And lucky enough, randomly seen an X, I found an amber chunk buzzing. That's like my second one I think I found, or maybe my third. I just, I've not got the luck with it, but it was worth 50k. So we're at a decent amount of money before we kind of get on to day 99. So today I wanted to give the animals a bit of a love in to let them know that we still love them. Yes, we're going to be stopping playing just until we start the day 200 video, but we still love them. They don't need to worry, we will return. So we went and gathered up everything that our grain mills had been making and refilled them. And then went out looking to try and get a fossil because I've heard about them and I want one, but I'm yet to find one. Didn't go great and this is it, day 100. As you can see, we've got to two and a quarter stars. The museum filled quite well. There's so many great wildlife in this museum. So many butterflies, so many bugs. I mean, the amount of fish we got were great. And we'd really put a lot of time and effort into this. This is, again, 30 hours of just pure gameplay. And I feel like the town looks great. We've done such a good job. We've not rushed anything and we've focused on the good stuff. Obviously, you've not seen much of the animals because that is something that Connie focused on and I focused more on the farming, the building and making so the place look nice. But this still took a lot of time and effort from Connie to do. But as you can see, we're walking over to the sort of the shopping district to see how everything's looking and everyone's greeting me. It's nice. 
and obviously we know the dreaded farming area as we've spent a long long time here so we both really do hope you've enjoyed this 100 days it's been a long long time and we put a lot of time and effort into it and if you did enjoy let us know and we will happily do a 200 days so this will be the final time that we're talking and the final time that we get to bed and call it a day.